All right, welcome back everyone to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about the latest evidence-based news on kidney health, obesity, longevity, and of course, nutrition. So with that, let's talk about a topic that's oftentimes misunderstood, which is body mass index. Now, BMI is used all over by everybody, but most people don't really understand what it means, what's the limitations. So this is a, one of those timeless videos that you really want to review a few times so you understand what BMI is and what it can, and more importantly, what it can't do. So what is BMI? Essentially what BMI does is it helps you to understand the amount of body fat that there is, and it does so by using somebody's height, and somebody's weight. That's it. Now, when you look at the guidelines that exist, there's a way to be able to estimate and put people into categories. And if you use those guidelines and you look at what the Center for Disease Control say, they end up saying that US obesity prevalence, which is how many folks end up around the country have what's classified as obesity, is around 41.9% currently. Now that's a staggering statistic. And unfortunately, over the last several decades, the only thing that's happened is that number has gone up. Now we're gonna talk about what the impact of that is, but what you wanna understand is how the heck do you calculate this BMI? It's very simple. You can go on Google, you can go on any web browser, type it in, and you'll find all the formulas done for you. But essentially, it's weight in kilograms. So if you're using pounds, you got to convert it into kilograms. And then you divide that number by your height, and your height is in meters squared. So if it's in inches, you got to convert it to meters, and you're taking that number and squaring it. But not to worry, it's very simple. You can use any online calculator to calculate your BMI, and it will go ahead and do that calculation for you. So what's the basics and background of this BMI and why is it so darn complicated? Well, it turns out that when you look at the history behind it, it was actually goes all the way back to 1832, where a gentleman by the name of Lambert Adolf Jacques uh, Cudillet, and I'm sure I'm absolutely butchering his name, so I apologize to all of you who know how to say it properly. But basically, he was a mathematician. He wasn't at that time, obviously, they weren't obesity doctors, but he wasn't a physician, he was a mathematician, he was an astronomer, a statistician, so not somebody in the medical field. And essentially, what he was looking at was not something to do with medicine, but he was trying to come up with a simpler way to be able to look at this information. So he devised what he called the Cudillet Index in 1832. And so when we fast forward to 1972, Ansel Keys comes along and he coins the term body mass index and he bases this on a study of 7,400 men from five European countries. And what's really important to note about this is one, of course, this is based on men. The other thing to note is this based on white men. So already you can see there's a number of flaws that are emerging is there's gender, and there's ethnic issues that are going to emerge based on what your background there is. So in 1993, the situation gets a little bit more complex because the World Health Organization says, well, BMI looks like it's a simple way and we can sort of categorize this into different categories to make it easier for us to understand simply who is underweight, normal weight, overweight, or obese. So they essentially say that if you're less than 18.5, you're underweight. If you're 18.5 to 24.9, you're considered normal weight. And if you're 25 to 29.9, you're overweight. And lastly, if you're greater than 30, you're considered to be obese. And then in 1997, it goes one step further where the International Obesity Task Force, they get together and they divide the greater than 30 into three different classes. And they call that obesity class one, class two, and class three. So class one is 30 to essentially 35, class two is the 35 to 40, and class three is the 40 pluses. Now, why should we all care? Because the whole objective of having something very simple that we could calculate really quickly on the fly and could be done repeatedly as quickly as, you know, just a couple of minutes in a doctor's office is because we know that the higher the BMI is, the more likely you could have any one of these diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancer, 
chronic kidney disease, high blood pressure, fatty liver, osteoarthritis, gout, and a whole host of other diseases. In fact, the list is so long that if I was to include every single one of those diseases, it would end up being several pages. So to save you guys a whole lot of time and to make this video concise, I included all of the links and references on there so you guys can see it in the bottom of the slide. But needless to say, it's important to understand that there are so many diseases. But then on the flip side, BMI is not a perfect marker. There are so many issues. For example, if you are Asian descent, the challenge that ends up being is, is in Asian descent, overweight actually starts much earlier. So if you have a BMI of 23 to about 25, that's already overweight. In fact, that becomes really important because if you wait till you're ending up at a standard range of 25 to 29, you might actually be already in the obese range, which means your risk of becoming diabetic and having all of those comorbidities is so much higher. So that's a category that we have to be very careful about. Athletes is another one because as you know, athletes may have far more muscle, they may have heavier bones, and as a result, they may look like they're obese. In fact, they're actually way fitter and healthier than the rest of us mere mortals. So that's another population. And then we get to the older adults who may look like they have normal BMI, but the issue that they will have is they have lost their muscle, so their overall weight looks lower, but that's only because they have replaced their overall weight with less muscle and some of that muscle has been replaced with fat. Now there's this concept of the obesity paradox and the obesity paradox basically says that if you take somebody who's elderly, somebody who has cancer, who's on dialysis, and if you get them to a normal BMI, if they start off at a higher BMI, you bring them down, what happens is their risk of death actually goes up. And the reason for it is, is because it turns out that it's not just the weight loss, it's muscle mass loss. So obesity paradox is just saying you have to protect your muscle. Protecting and preserving lean muscle mass is one of the most important things you can possibly do. And that's why it's so critical. So bottom line here is there's a number of problems that arise with BMI. Other things that are important is we mentioned the fact that Ansel Keys, the initial population he looked at was white. So you didn't look at any of the other populations, so Asians or Blacks, Hispanics, etc. And then we're not looking at metabolic markers. We're not looking at A1C. We're not looking at cholesterol. We're not looking at heart rate variabilities. We're not looking at inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP. We're not looking at blood pressure. So all of those other things will also end up mattering because of the fact that it's important to understand that are you just extra weight or are you also extra weight and having issues around your metabolic health. And so as you think about BMI, it's a great option to use because it's quick and dirty, but it's not the only option. For example, if you're looking for other options, some things that I personally like better is waist circumference. It's very easy to do once you've done it a couple of times. There's very good videos, there's very good websites, you can see very simple to learn how to do it. But essentially you want your waist to be less than 40 inches for men, less than 35 inches for women, that's ideal, lower the better. And then there's waist to height ratio, which in my opinion is even better than the waist circumference alone because it gives you a little bit more sensitivity there. So there you want the waist to height ratio to be greater than 0.5. If it's greater than 0.5, meaning that's bad. So if it's greater than 0.5, the risk for heart disease goes up. So in other words, if you look at your waist, you want your waist to be less than, ideally less than half your height. That's it. So your waist should be less than half your height. So another way to look at it is waist to hip ratio. This is one that a lot of people have heard about in the past. The idea being that you want your waist to be smaller than your hips. So for women, it's 0.85, meaning you want your waist to be 0.85, the size of your hips. And for men, you want it to be 0.9, the size of your hips. So there you go. Waist or waist to height 
or waist to hip. Now, if you're one of those fancy people and you like other things, you can get all sorts of fancy stuff like the scales that do the bioelectrical stuff where you just step on it. It shoots a very, very mild electrical current. You don't feel it at all. These are scales that are now 25, 30 bucks. You can get them from any of the stores, um, Amazon, Walmart, anywhere you go, you can get those. There's more fancy stuff where they essentially uh, dunk you in a tank and do that. There's DEXA scans. There's the liquids that they make you drink, the isotope dilution, they call it. And of course, you might have seen those bot pods and so forth that are there. But either way, you can do more specific and sensitive types of body fat testing if you want to do that. And that's the route you want to go. What's the bottom line here? BMI is just the start. And just because you have a high BMI or you have a low BMI doesn't mean it's telling you the whole story. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you got comments, you got questions, drop those in the comment section below. If you got topics you want to hear about, let me know. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you would like this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time.